Greetings, everyone. It's Taisha, and I am here. Uh, it is Monday, June 15th. And I just want to give a shout out to some great, great people that really encouraged me to do this video because I have been silent on social media and also on YouTube on this channel. And that's one thing that a lot of us YouTubers, content creators are having this issue right now where we're stuck. You know, how do we go back to creating content and giving people an escape from their everyday circumstance when we have so much going on in the world right now. And uh, that's that's where I'm at right now. So um, excuse my absence from social media. I know that also, too, there is a cell phone issue going on right now. So shout out to everybody who was going to watch this video once cell phone signals are, or cell phone towers are back up. I know that was an issue. So um to get home today, I had to follow the sun's movement, but also purchase a map at the gas station because I'm like, uh, I don't know where I'm at unless I have my GPS. But I uh, just want to say greetings to everybody here. This, These are some tough, tough things I'm going to talk about tonight. And like I said, I could not get back to being creative or being in a lighthearted place until I address some things that were on my mind pertaining to the current events. And one thing that happened over the weekend, as you guys know, I live here in Georgia, so I'm always out and about traveling around. And um, in Atlanta, there was a homicide. And there was a homicide of a brother named Rayshard Brooks that occurred Friday night into Saturday, I believe. Friday into Saturday, if I have my days right. I've been just all over the place. And again, Again, if you're not a stranger to my channel, I have an issue whenever I see, you know, the murder of just unarmed people by police, you know, in high definition. That really bothers me. I, I can't stand it. I hate it. And what hurts even more is when you see their, 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 the, the people who took their lives just get away scot-free. I think about Sandra Bland every time I get into my car, every freaking time I get into my car, I think that Sandra Bland could be me. And I imagine myself as Philando Castile. Uh, and I, I had that video where I recorded myself when I was going on to base when I lived in Washington to register my firearm because I was going to go live in base housing. And I actually stopped and cut my phone on and I thought like to myself, will this be the last video that you know, marks my last breath, you know, because it just takes that one, that one rogue dirtbag officer, and I wouldn't even call him an officer, race soldier in a police officer's uniform to take a person's life illegally, unjust. And that's what I wanted to talk about tonight. I will not show the video. I will not show the video of brother Rashard Brooks losing his life the other night. I'm not going to do that. However, I am going to point out some things that that I, I saw and that jumped out at me. And it just to make this video, I wanted to come at some people who really pissed me the fuck off. And I'm going to say some bad words tonight. I'm sorry, but you can't help but to get emotional when you see stuff like this. And there was one YouTuber in particular, I was subscribed to their channel because someone told me like, hey, this this brother does content. You know, he his his views are similar to yours. So I had subscribed. But then um, YouTube just decided the algorithm to pop his video up on my feed the other day. And he was giving his commentary on the homicide of brother Rayshard Brooks. And this joker right here talking about how it was his fault victim blaming him for his own death. And I'm sitting up here like, wow. And so actually I left some comments on that video and a lot of other people who saw my comments, you know, they found me on Instagram, sent me an inbox, things like that. And I'm like, wow, we really have folks out here who will blame you for your own death. I was in patrol for over five years and I took some ass kickings. I, you know, a situation where we, we went to go and arrest an offender. I got a concussion. I got punched in the head with closed fist. However, he can talk about me and call me all types of bitches and whatever to this day because he's still alive. OK, we use just enough force to affect the arrest, not take somebody's life unjustly. 
And um, and that wasn't gas, that was my chair that just made that noise. So, but yeah, I want to just go over this. So if you're not familiar, brother Rayshar Brooks, he was asleep in his vehicle and someone called police to respond to an individual who was asleep in their vehicle in the drive through line at the Wendy's of, of, up here in Atlanta. And so the first um, encounter that the officer has with Mr. Brooks, we see it via the officer's body cam. And the one thing that jumped out is that, okay, the officer gets out, just walks up to his driver's side door. Hey, yo, my man. Hey, yo, my man. Who the fuck does that? Like, where the fuck is your professionalism? First of fucking all, that's beside the point. But who the fuck hired him? Who the fuck put him out on independent patrol? He gets out the car and walks into the vehicle just all willy-nilly, don't call in the plate, no, and it's dark in that drive through So he was not fearful of his life or nothing. He didn't have a flashlight to, you know, cut and see what was in the car, what was the dangers, just opens up the car door, hey, yo, my man. So now I can pretty much assume that when that door opens up, he's Mr. Brooks was the only one in there. And they say that he was intoxicated. It led to field to a uh, standardized field sobriety test. So I'm pretty sure he detected the odor of an alcoholic beverage coming from the vehicle and and pinpointing it to Mr. Brooks. So he's talking like just no establishing your authority or nothing. Okay. First of all, you walk up, you see that his foot is still on the brake pedal. Okay. He's passed out sleep. What an officer should have did was protect everybody else in that drive-thru, including your damn self, including the person in that in, in that driver's seat. That's your responsibility now. Cut the fucking car off. Put the car in park. Then too much back and forth. Why the fuck are you talking? Like, okay, he's intoxicated or he could be having a medical emergency. Pick one, okay? Address what you, you got going on. Secure that vehicle. If he needs a medic, go ahead and get one coming. Get you a backup unit. Secure that vehicle and secure him. They lollygag too fucking much. And here's the part that, that got me fucked up is that the officer obviously detected the odor of an alcoholic beverage coming from his person. Why the fuck would you tell him to drive the vehicle to a parking space? Why? Why the fuck did you, why the fuck did he do that? Okay, so you're going to tell an intoxicated, or possibly intoxicated person to to drive a vehicle? So you just not only put Mr. Brooks in danger, everybody else in that park a lot to include yourself. Stupid, stupid as fuck. So when Mr. Brooks puts his vehicle in a parking space, how many times did the officer keep going back and forth to his vehicle? I got so fucking sick and tired of him turning on the fucking ignition. Why are you getting out with keys in your hand, going back and forth? He did not know what in the fuck to do, to be quite honest. He did not know what the fuck to do at all. Like I said, this 40 some minute encounter could have been handled in about five minutes. First of all, the vehicle should have never moved. Mr. Brooks, he could have been taken into custody immediately. He could have been detained in cuffs immediately until, okay, we have ruled out he's having a medical emergency. Okay, he is intoxicated. Apparently, this vehicle got to this spot by not only his own admission, but from what the officer can see and articulate. And um, so, yeah, that's the part that gets nervous. This officer obviously had no fucking clue how to investigate a DUI. You do not need standardized field sobriety tests to make a DUI arrest. You don't. You really don't. You can articulate the safety of the individual, also the safety of the, of the public, and the safety of yourself. He could have been detained in cuffs a long time ago. So then... We're going to skip forward to the actual ground fighting part. And I just want to say thank you to everybody who was here. I know this, this topic is really sensitive. And I want to say shout out to um, some great, great content creators such as um, Intelligent Black Love. That is Danae and, and Melvin who, who has this, uh, this brilliant, they, they tag team approach on, on current events. They speak fearlessly and unapologetically on things pertaining to the black community. Make sure you subscribe and check them out on also YouTube. They have a podcast and also they're on Facebook as well. 
Shout out to uh, Brother Reed B1. I talked to him as well to really just get me to a point where I can express this. And shout out to everybody else who has, who has tagged me, inboxed me. Uh, I see we have Brother Air from VA. Thank you so much. You know, you always give me an encouraging word as well because it takes a lot to separate your emotion from logic and fact. And I used to be ashamed of the fact that I had, that I had this experience in law enforcement, you know, it's just, it's a lot going on. It's finally coming to the surface and being addressed and it's being handled right now because there has been too many lives lost on the count of race soldiers and racism, white supremacy within the police department. And I'm glad to get that off my chest finally. So then um, I want to go ahead and go to the part where um, the officers attempted to take Mr. Brooks into custody. And this was after about 40 some minutes from the initial uh, account and uh, uh, the, the encounter with Mr. Brooks, 40 some minutes. It does not take that long to do standardized field sobriety tests. You do not have to have a full out conversation. Mr. Brooks was very cooperative. He addressed the officers as sir, answered questions, all of that. And then you can also see in the video, Mr. Brooks was able to have his cell phone in his hand. Like I said, who the fuck released these officers to be out on the street? This is crazy. This is rogue. This is dangerous. And so I see why the chief of police stepped, stepped down. And quite frankly, their supervisors, co-workers, all of them, it, this is on their hands as well. So when you get to the ground, okay, when, they, when the one officer goes to go hands on with Mr. Brooks, nobody ever told him he was under arrest. And I know there's a back and forth. I've seen a back and forth in certain uh, videos and posts where they say that an officer does not have to tell the person they're under arrest, but you're going to get your ass kicked. Each time I've made the determination to take somebody into custody, my partner was there with me. We knew what was going on and we advised that person to turn around. You're under arrest. That's the first thing. They have to know that you are a police officer and that you have to let them know they're either detained or they're under arrest. Then you go go hands on because anything after that, you know, if they fight or shoot you in the face, do whatever. This person knew that they were under arrest. They knew that you you were there doing your duties. They never told him he was under arrest. And I mean, it's it's back and forth. It's back and forth. I can't say that it was right or wrong, but as when you're doing law enforcement, honestly. There's no secrets. I don't want to fight. I want to get someone into cuffs. You know, I want to talk them into it, have them in agreement, and know that I am doing things by the law, not sneak attack, not, you know, playing them, playing them for a fool, illegally arrest. And I want it to go as smoothly as possible. So when it goes to the, the struggle and the flee, many people are just making up their own Fourth Amendment you know, they really are, they're making it up. And I can't tell you how you should feel or think about that, but I'm just saying from, from, from my experience, I'm gonna let someone know that they are being seized, detained, arrested. I'm gonna let, let you know, and I'm gonna let you know that all the, all the cars are on the table. I'm going past that, but when it gets to the ground fighting, many people now you will know about my experience i've had some of the worst fights in patrol i've had some of the worst fights when you see a lot of my scars on me you know it comes from being in patrol and fighting that's what's going to happen like and it's not fighting it's attempting to affect an arrest on a person who does not agree to go to jail or who does not to be placed into custody without further incident okay i know that a lot of officers are just I don't know. I mean, you willingly signed up for this. You willingly went through the police academy. You willingly went through those scenarios. You can't be afraid to take an ass whooping. I've been shot at. I've stood toe to toe with a convicted felon with the stolen firearm. That's the risk you take. You, but you just have to make sure that you're you're securing your tactics. You can't just say, "Oh, I'm scared." Like the the race soldier who was posing as a police officer shot our sister, uh, Tatiana Jefferson, got spooked by something that shot our sister through the fucking window. You know, this, this shit, you can't be scared of your own fucking shadow. And that's why, why I, I call them rogue call of duty, scared as fuck, rogue so-called police officers. It's, it's, it's asinine. 
But as you have two officers on the ground, ground fighting, I've been in that situation multiple times. You do not introduce additional weapons in a ground fight when you're in such close proximity. You do not pull out anything because guess what? It's going to get taken away from you. So when it comes to the point of the taser, the officer who first introduced the taser as they're sitting on the ground, you can see that from my observation, he was attempting to drive stun Mr. Brooks. And if you don't know what a drive stun is, okay, when you carry a taser, all officers who carry a taser have been tased. I've been tased, okay? And it's a five, se five second quote ride for each cycle. And you know what that feels like. It doesn't kill you. You lock up. I was able to talk <laughs> and you are placed on the ground. And that's, it, it doesn't kill you. So for this officer to introduce the taser and go in for a drive stun. Now, now with a taser, the cartridge, it's the taser itself that you have the, the little cartridge box. Forgive me if I don't say the right name for it, but two prongs come out like, like, like this. One goes straight out and the other one comes down at like an eight degree angle so that as it moves out, the spread gets bigger. And that's how on your back, it'll kind of get you in your shoulder and the next one be like right above your butt. And that's like for a spread for the, the taser to be effective. So it appears at that close proximity, the officer was trying to drive stun Mr. Brooks. And the drive stun is... If you don't get like a proper um, spread with the two probes, you, you go in and you can use the taser as like a stun gun. You have to have have contact. And it appears what he was trying to do. Why? You are in a ground fight with another officer. These are what you have to worry about. Control the hands. Why are you fucking with his ankle? I don't get it. So when you hear, when someone hears or sees the taser, you just hear, you know, that don't tase me, bro, you hear it, they're going to go for it and reach for it, though nobody want to feel that. So he's you're, the suspect or whoever has good sense is going to reach to avoid getting electrocuted. And that's what happened. So my observation, like I said, I'm, I wasn't an investigator on scene. I don't know, you know, everything from the the scene has not been, been revealed, but from my observation, it looks as though the officer was going in for a drive stun, meaning there was not a cartridge on the business end of the taser. So after Mr. Brooks gets to his feet, it appears the backup officer was able to draw his taser and actually tase and make connection with the darts on Mr. Brooks, but it appears that it was not a good connection. One of the probes was connected at least, and it's possible that a probe was, was you know, it did not pierce his skin, it was attached to his clothing, and the other one was just free falling. So then Mr. Brooks takes off running, but he's still holding the taser without the cartridge, making it just a flashlight and a stun gun at the moment. So as they're running, the officer, you know, keeps up to ma maintain or to make sure that he has that contact with the taser probes and he's still delivering cycles. From my observation, when it went to the security camera to Wendy's, and this comes from my experience as well, I've delivered, you know, I've deployed a, a taser on suspects as well. And it appears that Mr. Brooks, being possibly right hand dominant because he had a cell phone in his right hand. He heard the taser going off and it's possible he felt some of the charge from the taser. When he turns around, he just turned around to, to swat the probes off himself. I don't believe that he turned around to deploy the taser. He hasn't had any taser training. And like I stated, the officer was attempting to drive stun Mr. Brooks' ankle. There was no taser cartridge, so there was no danger unless you had skin-to-skin -skin contact. So all he did was turn around to swat the probes off himself as he was running. But the thing of it is, a lot of people say, well, he, he took an officer's taser and, you know, it justified going up to the next level of force. It is a less than lethal option, less than lethal so where that's why officers, that's why 
we get tased to know that you can fight through it. They tase us to show that you can still handcuff a suspect under the cycle of the taser. You can get through it. It does not end your life. It doesn't. So if anything, what I was trained, someone has your taser, okay, you can go to using your baton and trying to get that, that and using the baton to have them drop that. We are taught pressure points, um, striking different areas to get a certain reaction. Your gun should not have came out. It should have not came, came out. It should not. And rightfully so, the officer that deployed or discharged the firearm should be charged with murder and should be prosecuted and convicted for murdering this citizen, for murdering Mr. Brooks. It was his fucking fault for not taking action within the first five minutes of making contact with Mr. Brooks. You see, he is asleep. Detect the odor of an alcoholic beverage. Cut the fucking car off. Put him in cuffs. Tow the fucking car and he can sit in custody for either DUI, charge with DUI. You can read him implied consent. You can either have him go back to the station and blow into a machine, get his levels, or get a blood draw. You can articulate not doing standardized field sobriety test. What's the worst that would happen? They plead down to a reckless driving. Or hell, because he was so fucking cooperative, you have discretion. Charge with drunk in public, you know what I'm saying? But be, because he did, he admitted to driving there, putting the public in danger. You could have fucking arrested him within the first five minutes of making contact, and that's why I'm so pissed off and I am over this. That officer should 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 be prosecuted, and also the officer who was there. There have been plenty of times where I would show up on a scene, and I would have officers lollygagging. Like, hold on, why are we bullshitting? Okay, you have your probable cause right here to make the arrest, do it, you know? And I would intervene, come on, go ahead, you're under arrest, turn up a chance behind your back, you're under arrest, I'll say it twice, okay? You don't sit up here and lollygag and bullshit and whatever the fuck they was doing out there and what happens, someone fucking loses their life. And then they say two out of the three shots hit them, you could have fucking killed somebody else who ain't have shit to do with it. You know, that's that's why it pissed it pissed me off. So I got that out of my system. And like I said, thank you to everybody who really listened to me and really kind of helped me put this into words because it is terrible. It is terrible to see this happen. And someone had, has sent me an article right before I, I went live. Also here in Georgia, I believe it was in Smyrna, Georgia, there was a white suspect who took an officer's taser, actually tased them, you know, and he had, had his day in court. You know what I'm saying? If you can't make a, a snap decision, yes, you may get the shit beat out of you. And I have gotten the shit beat out of me time and time again. After you, 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 you choose to use some type of force to affect the arrest, then you have to go and administer care for your arrestee. They're, they're your responsibility. And the answer is just not to automatically go and shoot people. That's not right. That's not what it's there for. That's not what your firearm is there for. And just because you're spooked, whatever, you're getting your ass handed to you does not mean you have the right to kill somebody. And that's 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 my position on that. So I'm going to take a break from that and just say greetings to everybody who was here. This was tough to talk about. This is really, really tough, really, really tough. And um, you said the 40 minute conversation at Wendy's parking lot, they treat their job like the show Cops. Thank you so much, Cocky Bandito, because I was going to also hit on that. I will hit on that a little bit later, but we can we can do it right now since you brought it up. The show Cops is being canceled, and and um, consequently other shows such as Cops is, is being canceled. I was on Cop, well, I was filmed for in a, in a segment of Cops back in I think it was 2011. I was filmed, but my episode or my segments didn't air because nothing exciting happened. You know, I was. I did a traffic stop. I was dispatched to a loud party. And, you know, you just 
be kind to people. You'll get your days where there's someone, some people who just don't want to go to jail. Like jail is not a good place to go and they just don't want to go. But nothing exciting happened that was TV worthy. I think for that summer, it was called Too Hot for TV or something like that. But I'm actually happy that Cops has been canceled. I'm really happy because nowadays it's more like kind of re-victimizing the public. And just because I wore the uniform does not make me ex exempt from having to deal with the police. My mom always told me I'm still a black person. I'm just dressed up in a costume. And that's how I treat it every day. It comes off, it goes back on. And for the department that I used to work for, you know, I won't say them tonight. You just have to do your research. And those who are watching from that jurisdiction, what's up, y'all? Y'all can send a system message. I see that y'all follow me. There, They have a recruiting video. They have a recruiting video. And one of the officers that is in it actually violated my civil rights. And yes, I made complaints. I filed grievances, did everything under the sun. The good old boy system closed ranks on your ass. And um, I can see how these shows like Cops and Live PD and stuff like that, it traumatizes the public because you will see these dirtbag cops. And I I'm, I'm, I'm wasn't a dirtbag, okay? But people may call me a dirtbag, okay? But like, like, like I said, now what I see it as, I've seen episodes of the prior ju jurisdiction or the, the prior agency I worked for and also other agencies not familiar with some people and also in the groups that I'm in. What these shows are used for now is the officers who are shitbags, who are absolute dirtbags, who do not deserve to be out there terrorizing the public, they put their asses on these TV shows where they sit down there for their interview, they put on their class A uniforms, a tie and all their service medals, and polish them up so that they can get promoted within the ranks. You know what I'm saying? Other officers who are absolute shit bags and dirt bags, they have them in records. Those who lied in court and can't testify who are on the Brady list, they had their asses in records and, and let them retire because they got some dirt on some other higher ups and shit like that. And then you have others that go to training. They take them off the streets and they put them in training. And you see who gets to have first contacts with the new recruits who get to go out on the streets and demonstrate all of their newly learned tactics and things they learned in the police academy. So, yeah, um, that's that's the thing. But these cop shows need to go away. I absolutely hate it when this person has sent me this video of that department. I'm like, I really didn't need to see that. You know, this is a fucking dirtbag. Why are they still there? You know? But when it comes to um, shows like, like that, good. They can just fucking go away. And speaking of officers who speak out against injustice, who are whistleblowers, who do bring to light the shady shit that goes on, you know, who can you run to? And I don't mean to quote uh, the, the group Escape, but who do you run to? Who do you report this to? You can report it to your supervisor. You can report it to internal affairs or professional standards. You can report it to, um, I don't know, the mayor, the chief of police. You can report it wherever you want. Most of the time, don't shit happen. And when you do report it, you get outcasted and you get a target on your back. You get a target on your back. And uh, that leads me into the next topic that I wanted to talk about, which is the review on 846, the, the um, the comedy special with Dave Chappelle. So just want to say greetings to everybody who is here. Um, shout out to my moderators. You know, if I get any crappy comments, you know, please just block block people because this is sensitive. And just to let anybody know too, if you're here and you're expecting me to sound like, Ki like Candace Owens, motherfuck her and you on the wrong channel, get off my channel. I can say whatever the fuck I want to, but I will not, I will not victim blame. I will not sit up here and say that or go through Mr. Brooks history and somehow find it to where he deserved to be murdered unjustly like this. And before his time, negative. You're not going to get that over here. Shout out, Sister Danae. <laughs> she is here. Make sure you, you subscribe, 
to Intelligent Black Love. I, I just want to say thank you, Danae and Melvin, because it's because of y'all. Like I've been, I've been sitting back over the past two weeks because I've just been observing what's what's going on in society right now. And I'm at a place where I left a lot of chaos in Washington. I left a lot of chaos up there and I'm trying to regroup and really find a peace, you know, in my current place. But also I'm trying to I'm not disassociating myself or saying that I'm detached from society, but those of us who do speak out on these things and see the world for what it really is, it's exhausting. It will drive you bonkers. And you have to take out that time to regroup with, with like-minded people. You have to get some stuff off your chest as well. We still have our, our daily duties. You know, many of us still have to go to work. <laughs> you know, we're, you know, on the grind, we have families, families to take care of. We may have, have other things that we're doing, but the love and the care for the community, that just it it takes a lot out of us. It takes a lot. And so thank you for, to everybody who, who still subscribe, people who are subscribing as we speak, because this takes a lot out of you. And I'm just grateful that I finally have the right circle of people to be able to keep me encouraged. And I can do the same for them because, you know, truth tellers have no friends. And shout out to our Kathy. Oh, my gosh. Our sister who is doing her thing over in the Gambia. Not only did she have to, you know, deal with adjusting over there, but people over there who are just fighting what she's what she's doing, the positive change she's bringing and actually, you know, being proactive and improving the situation and circumstances for Gambians and also for us, us over here in the U.S., you know, to have a place for us to go. And when we need to take a break from fighting racism, white supremacy, because people think, oh, just because we don't have a knee on our neck doesn't mean that we're not experiencing racism, white supremacy every fucking day. And we really are. We absolutely are. Um, but like I said, there's there's a lot happening back up in Washington. And I'm just thanking the ancestors and I'm, I'm not there. But I did not come over here and, and I'm in heaven. It's just, you know, I had to get to a place where I have a, a better chance of putting a W on the board instead of continuing taking L's. Um, Carlitos, I don't support any law enforcement officer, current or former. That's that's absolutely your your position to do that. I mean, I, I'm not going to sit up here and say I apologize or I regret being a police officer. Carlitos, if you had something to hire me once I came out of the military where I didn't have to, you know, go and be a police officer or whatever, then, you know, we, we then we can talk. But I don't apologize. I don't regret it. It was actually honorable service. I I don't regret not not one day. And I, I salute all of those who are still on departments who are not you know, being in addition to the system of racism, white supremacy, who are actually making a difference, who are actually out here, you know, when someone calls 911 because their child is being sexually assaulted or, you know, when, you know, you need emergency services and that goes to dispatchers, the, the firefighters, they're there and I salute them for that. So you have have your position if you choose to unsubscribe to unsubscribe or you know whatever that's totally up to you and i respect that but that's who i am and you know i remember when i was joining the navy my recruiter told told me to make sure that after i do what i had to do i come back and you know i bring forth positive change and be an asset to where i left and where i left was cincinnati ohio where i was in the race rights of 2001. So I feel as though I've, I've, I've done my part. I'm not done, but I feel as though I have been an, an asset. So take it how you want it. Um, <laughs> we have a black man. Cops pull some of my family over constantly because their license plates doesn't give information when they find out why law enforcement they get a little respect, Southern Cali. I'm in a group on Facebook. I won't say the, the name of the group, but they actually had a thread talking about uh, where people were given their accounts of getting pulled, pulled over by police. And I'm reading through them and I'm like, wow, I can totally understand like, like brother Carlitos who said, you know, he doesn't trust law enforcement. I can absolutely see, I can absolutely see why because the amount of illegal arrest and the kind games that are played to search people's car, you can't assume that everybody is a fucking criminal. I mean, 
the, the biggest drug rings and the biggest criminals are wearing the same uniform, you know? And I read this and I'm like, I see why. And I drive a vehicle, you know? And so I'm like, like I said, every day I cut on my car, you know, I hope that I'm not a hashtag like our, our slain sister, Sandra Bland, our, our slain brother, Philando Castile. I think about this a lot. And is I don't know. I, I, I'm I'm so stuck. But like I said, we have to work diligently to replace the system of racism, white supremacy with a system of justice. And shout out to our elder Neely Fuller Jr. and his compensatory concept, his his counter racist strategy. And I'm sorry that I always get the title of his book mixed up, but that's it's the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept is a compensatory counter racist codified. Um code. And I love that book. I read it constantly. I think my pages are starting to get frayed because it goes everywhere I go. And I just wish I had read that early on in life. I just, I really wish I had. Um, who posed as police officers to kill impunity. Thank you, DJ King James. I saw your, um, your inbox as well. Just forgive me for, for not being quick to reply. Okay. Um, we have... Don't explain yourself. We all know that white supremacy joined the force to abuse black people, and there is a distinct difference. And that's that's absolutely it. Um, very few people know of why, uh, what, what, what led up to me leaving the police department. Of course, the pretty answer is, you know, I got married and went and lived my best life in Hawaii. That's really what happened. But le leading up to that, um, I'll just go ahead and put it out. Um, it was the end of 2012. I was dispatched and responded to a call for um, just to go light, lightly over it for a call of um, a road rage incident where one uh, driver produced a firearm on the occupants and driver of the other vehicle. And so when the 911 came call had came through, uh, we the victims were following the suspect vehicle up Jefferson Avenue in Newport News. And right before the vehicle, the suspect vehicle had attempted to get on I-64 via the Fort Eustis on-ramp, that's when myself and other officers, including an uh, unmarked um, investigator, were able to stop the vehicles. And uh, being the only patrol officer there, I was the only patrol officer. The other ones who were in attendance were my supervisors, like I said, uh, unmarked uh, vehicle, which was a detective, all stopped his vehicle. And I knew from the dispatch that the victims were in a silver sedan and the suspect was in a pickup truck. And so as I get out of my vehicle, I park, uh, what I would, yeah, I park, marked on scene and I'm making the approach and I'm behind the victim's vehicle. I make my approach and I check on my victims. I'm like, hey, are you okay? Cause I didn't know like somebody could be possibly shot or what. And also there was a firearm in this situation. I just, I did not exactly know where it was. My victim said they were okay. I identified them as my victims. I look up at the pickup truck and I see that my supervisors are up there. And no one is back here with the victims but me. And I look up at the pickup truck and the driver door opens and the driver hops out and starts shaking hands with my supervisors. And I'm like, what the hell? And the victims are looking at me like, what the hell? And I'm like, I don't know what's going on. So I tell them to stand by and I go make my approach to the suspect uh, pickup truck. Come to find out he was an off-duty detective for the department I worked for. I did not know him, but I saw my supervisor shaking his hand. And I'm like, hold on, what, what's going on? So long story short, I'm there with the victims. I'm getting their story. I'm talking with the supervisors. I'm like, okay, so this is involving another officer. Are y'all going to take this over? Because, you know, it kind of eliminates us from being from investigating this and it was just a clusterfuck and while all this is happening i noticed that my supervisors are calling in or trying to get information on the victims 
to try to justify the off-duty officer pulling his firearm on these victims. And I'm like, what in the entire fuck is going on here? I continue to gather the information. I find the firearm. I'm taking pictures of it. I'm talking with the victims. I'm like, hey, this is what's going on. This is what you need to do. This is who I am. This is who everybody is here on scene. This is the offender's information. And like I said, I was just in a daze. And what it reminded me of, let me know if y'all watched the movie called um, Tales from the Hood. Tales from the Hood. My mother showed me that when I was a little girl. And the first story in Tales from the Hood was um, the black police officer. He was a rookie and he was with the white police officers who had uh, illegally stopped, beat and murdered the prominent brother who was in the community. And as the story so happens, the brother comes back and seeks his revenge on the white officers, but also that black officer for not intervening and allowing him to be murdered. That always plays in my head, you know, and I'm like, hold on. Why are they running the victims for criminal histories and warrants and all this? So I get, get back to the precinct. I remember the... um. In the office, in the sergeant's office, they're all in, in there arguing because apparently if I wasn't there, this whole thing would have just been blown into the wind, under the rug. I write my report and I make myself available for internal affairs when it happens. I don't believe, hold on, did I? Yeah, I did get the call to an, an, an internal affairs. And when it came time to testify, I was the only officer, I believe, who testified. And that officer ended up getting convicted. And thank you to the victims when the, the, the judge asked them for a statement or, an, or anything that I think it was their, their victim impact statement. They stated that the only officer who brought them justice, who treated them as victims and not as suspects and respected them, they stated Officer Essex. And that is on the um, court stenographer's record it was officer Essex. They said they're right there in open court. After I walked out of, out of court that day, the target was on my back because my supervisor, he was best friends with the suspect, the offender. That was his best friend. And as a result, he was forced to retire because of, of the conviction. So when I got back to work, oh, he was on my ass, on my ass, so fucking bad on my ass. But I, I took that. I took that. I fought back. And I would say I have a W because I did not allow him to get me fired or do something to where they had to give me my papers. I left the city when I was ready. I left the, the city, you know, doing my final interview, turned in my stuff when I was ready. And there's a lot of things that happen in there. But what do you do? when you are a whistleblower and you uphold your your oath. And that leads me to the next, and, and that's exactly what happened, Kareem. You know, I, what it's called, I crossed the thin blue line, you know? It didn't matter how many caskets I carried on the honor guard, how many ass kickings I had, nothing. You crossed the thin blue line, it's your ass. And um, this leads to the, the next topic, which is um, 846 with Dave Chappelle. So let me know if you saw them and take a quick drink. So let me know if you watched that. I watched it the other day. Very, very powerful. And it was also one, one thing that helped me get my confidence to, you know, speak out, speak what I wanted to say. Yes, we don't have to be reactionary. And yes, and sh shout out to those of us who do, you know, look to us to kind of be the voice of reasoning or, you know, the calm and the storm while things are happening. Yes, it's okay for you, for you to, to feel adverse about things that happen, especially when you see people, unarmed people who should not have been murdered in 4K or 1080p HD. Not, not, not okay. Not okay at all. Um, a couple videos ago, a couple weeks ago, I mentioned a ancestor, Mark Essex. And if you don't know about Mark, Mark Essex, he was born in um, Imperia, Kansas. He, he joined the police. No, he joined the Navy 
where he was subject to a lot of racism and discrimination. And he tried his damnedest to, to fight back to the point where he went AWOL for a little while to escape the racism and stuff. He was stationed over in California. And shout out to, to brother, um, brother Chris Miller. His station is, um, his channel is Black Up In You. And he also has Black Up In You too because they decided to take his channels down. He actually educated me on an uh, incident in U.S. Navy history concerning black sailors called, um, I believe it was the incident or the incident at Port Chicago. And Port Chicago occurred in, in California where African-American sailors were forced to do dangerous work handling torpedoes and, you know, uh, munitions like that without proper training, just forced to be fucking slaves for the Navy. And these brothers decided to stand up. Like, no, this is not going to, we demand training, you know, proper, I don't know, just not being treated like they were still on the fucking plantation. And something happened where those munitions at Port Chicago exploded. It went off killing mass people, destroying property, shit like that. And as a result, I, I may have my facts mixed up, but I'll link his video in here. Powerful video. Shout out brother Chris Miller. Something happened to where it was like 21 African-American U.S. Navy sailors and they were all like punished some, somehow. They were punished and only one has, you know, received like a presidential pardon for something. But they were all punished leading up to this destruction at um, at Port Chicago. So aside from the point, getting back to Mark Essex. So um, he later, after being discharged from the Navy, he joined the Black Panther Party for self-defense. And everyone knows how I feel about the, the Black Panther Party for self-defense. What others want you to think of them and slander them, call them terrorists or, you know, everything bad under the sun, they were there for self-defense. That means you had to fuck with them before they got back and fucked with you. But they were all about, you know, even in the playing field, making sure that, you know, black people were not the subjects of police, race soldiers, posing as police officers, brutality, deaths. Anything that was illegal, they wanted to empower you to protect your goddamn self. Court martial. Thank you. Court martial. Oh, I was trying to think of that word. Thank you so much. Um, Port Chicago mutiny. There we go. Thank you so much. <laughs> and shout out to my other veterans, Kareem and uh, Brother Melvin, a few other people uh, Ed from VA as well. So um, getting back to Mark Essex, he, he joined the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. And then um, he had went down to, well, because he never had his day in court, allegedly they say he went down to New Orleans and he began um, enacting justice on police officers or on race soldiers posing as police officers throughout the New Orleans area. You can, you, you can, can Google it. A lot of people who are actually from New Orleans never heard of Mark, Mark Essex and, and what they deem as the Hojo uh, sniper. And Mark Essex is actually in this book. He's briefly mentioned in this book called The Ultimate Sniper. Shout out to um, the EDC guy, 073, who put me onto this book. He was like, hey, your family member is mentioned in this book. So they revere him, you know, for his skills as a sniper and things like that. However, Mark Essex, just like Christopher Dorner, took an oath to protect the Constitution, protect protect the people from all. Oh, and I'm like all over the place too. So don't judge me. It's been a while since I took that oath. But to protect the Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. And that's what Dave Chappelle hit on in 846. When you have race soldiers, we have this big problem with racism, white supremacy, and it's being seen all across the world. You know, all across the world, they're seeing what racism, white supremacy is doing here to us in America. And the thing of it is, other people can relate. And so 
Uh, speaking of, of brother Chris, Chris Dorner real quick, uh, after my whole situation with the police department and I got the target on, on, on my back, you know, uh, they began calling me this slur. They, they called me Chris Dorner. She's going to do a Chris Dorner. That was actually a slur. That was actually a slur. And that's used for black officers who whistleblow. And as a result, when you start seeing the injustice, you start separating yourself from people. You're not this team player. They say, oh, you're supposed to be this team player. How the fuck am I play on this team when y'all out to get my ass? You know, I got to watch what I say, watch what I do, you know, because they're, they're doing, they're stacking their deck to get you fired, to do something to you. So you start withdrawing from things you used to do. And that was a big thing. Once I saw what was going on, I started with withdrawing myself from everybody else. And you have trust issues. Still to this day, I say I have trust issues. I really do. I don't trust everybody. But I was called a slur, Chris, Chris Dorner. And um, yeah. So how is it that we can't or we're not supposed to revere brothers like Mark Essex and Chris Dorner? and Micah Johnson and things like that for, you know, protecting us from domestic enemies. But you expect me to observe a fucking Columbus Day? We're going to lead right into Columbus, right? So I'm pretty sure y'all, oh, I love it that, you know, these statues, these Confederate statues, these symbols of white supremacy are being taken down. I hope they 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 take down anywhere you see that the the Ten Commandments take them shits down too, because all of it was used to further the mission around the globe of racism, and white supremacy. It's gonna lead us right into that. So I'm pretty sure y'all saw the mayor or the governor of New York tr tr try to explain how Columbus is pertinent to Italian history and all that. How the fuck is Columbus pertinent to Italian history or any history here in America? First of all, he, he never stepped foot here. But also, too, there were people. They came before Columbus. There were people here before him. How the fuck do you discover some shit that was already here? There is a Native American mound in Ohio. It's like an hour and a half drive east of, of, of Cincinnati, Serpent Mound. And there's another one here in Georgia, but it's like, you know, the people have been there for like, I think on the website, so like 14,000 years. How the fuck do you discover some people and some stuff they was doing before you were even thought of, okay? I absolutely love it. Shout out to the House of Consciousness in Norfolk, Virginia. Shout out to Brother Omek and Sister Drea, who put me on, and Brother Righteous, put me on to Brother or Dr. Ishaka Busa Bereshango. If you got this book, go ahead and let, let me know. Okay, let me know. Dr. Bereshango, man, I, I wish, I wish, 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 wish that I could have just sat at his feet and just listened to him nonstop, you know, while he was still here. But, but he is an ancestor and he left some great works for us here on YouTube. His books are, are out here. He left some great work for us. And he ensured that we knew the truth about African people and European holidays of mental genocide. I call them hella days. But um, on page 11, so when I finally got outside of the four walls of Cincinnati, Ohio, I went to Virginia and I just knew that something was off. Every so often in Virginia, they would have these um, Confederate war, this, these civil war reenactments where people, you know, in their closets with some other stuff that might be in there, would get dressed up in civil war regalia and go out here to these fields and you know, act like they're in a civil war all over again, bullshit like that. And one thing that had me thinking, you know, like, yes, they will kill a bunch of indigenous people and then name a street or a neighborhood after them. So I started researching what was Big Bethel, what was Powhatan or Powhatan, if I pronounced that right. What was, was this? What is Tappahannock? What is this? And I started seeing how these people disappeared when the pilgrims, pilgrims came over here. And remember, 
Europe didn't send its best, brilliant, finest over here. They ended out the jail to send them over here. And Dr. Bereshango did his research and let us know just that. I'm going to read this part right here that's on page 11 about um, John, Captain John Smith. There's some streets and there's some streets named Pocahontas and stuff like that out there. The whole area of what Christopher Newport University is a whole story behind that. But it states, Pilgrim cannibalism, Captain John Smith, eight, I'm sorry, 1580 to 1631 wrote, so great was our famine that a savage we slew and buried. One moment. The poorer sort took him up again and ate him. What that means was they had uh, slew some savage person, buried him. And then the poorest of them dug him up and ate him, okay? <coughs> Not Corona. I remember in school around Thanksgiving, our teacher was like, yeah, the pilgrims, they were so hungry, they ate the leather off their boots, off their shoes. And so he continues, and so did divers one another boiled and stewed with herbs. And one amongst the rest did kill his wife, powdered her, and had eaten part of her. And this is from the General History of Virginia, uh, fourth book, page 293. These were some evil, savage, the worst you can think of. Like when I think of the pilgrims and think of, you know, all that shit on the East Coast, I think about the movie Hostel. Hostel. I think about Night of, Night of the, the Living Dead with the cannibalism, eating rats and shit. You know, these Columbus and them, fuck Columbus and them. And I make, make it a point that whenever I see a business advertising Columbus Day sale, I for goddamn sure do not go spend my money there. I do not. Why the fuck are we observing a Columbus Day? But I can't observe a Chris Dorner Day, celebrate Mark Essex, can't talk about Marcus Garvey. Malcolm X can't have a national holiday. Fuck all that shit, okay? Throw them goddamn statues in the ocean. Tear the motherfuckers up. They have no business being there. It is a slap in the fucking face. It's like if you bring a statue of Adolf Hitler and erect it, you know, over here. That's not fucking right. When we see shit like that, that does psychological damage to us, our children, and future generations, take them shits down, okay? Fuck it, all right? And that's what I got to say about that. Um, yeah, that felt good. <laughs> but anywho, that that was just a lot of stuff that I had to get off my chest. I could not get into my other conversations, my, my other projects I'm working on again until I address what's going on in current events. And shout out to everybody who who, who is taking a stand. This cannot go on. This is not right to do these things. And you know, dirty laundry is being aired out. And that's just it. I don't agree with, you know, lives being being taken illegally for police officers or for race soldiers posing as police officers. And I don't put a color on that, but you should not have the protection of the badge or anything like that to protect you from the wrongdoings that you do, you should be held accountable and prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. I, I agree with that. Cause look, I'm also a citizen. I was born here. I got a social security number, a birth certificate. I have invested interest in this, this country and everyone here, you know, I'm shoulder to shoulder with you. I'm not exempt for anything. You know, I've been on traffic stops. I was in a traffic stop uh, a couple of years ago when I was in Ohio. Speak of this, I was driving my brother's car and I was coming from having dinner with my sister and I was driving back to the house and my brother's car, <laughs> anybody that's, that's from Cincinnati know that it's okay to drive a bucket. You don't have state inspection, but also the salt in the street tears up your car. So I rusted in just, just a bucket. So I was driving his bucket so that I wouldn't have to rent a car and I get pulled over. And, um, so I'm like, okay, because I saw the officer. The officer got beside me 
And then they got behind me and I'm like, they're running, running the tags. So when they finally lit me up, I pull over, I cut on the interior light. Well, actually when they got behind me, I'm like, let me go and start, start getting out my driver's license. And so when I got pulled over, I cut on the interior light, I rolled down all four windows. And because I flew into Cincinnati, I wasn't armed. So um, I had my driver's license and I had my, my hands on the steering wheel like, like this. And I had bright pink nail polish on. So the officer come, comes up, is like, you're not Mr. Essex. And I'm like, that's my brother. And so I was thinking to him like, unless it's an equipment violation, he'll be super petty to give me an equipment violation. And this ain't even my car. And I have a Hawaii driver's license. But I'm also told him like, if he does anything like take my license and run it or pull me out the car, it's an illegal arrest. But when he came up and said, you're not Mr. Essex, no. And uh, he was like, well, um, I'm like, that's my brother. I'm using this car. And then he asked me, do I know where my brother is? I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't. And he's like, OK, well, tell your brother to get his license fixed. I'm like, Roger that. Am I free to go? Yes, you are. I cut off the light, rolled up the windows and continued on my way. But I think about that a lot. You know, it just takes that that the wrong race soldier to pull over my, my brother, even me. And my brother could be Rayshar Brooks, could be George Floyd, could be Philando Castile, you know. So as a content creator, we have this in our, our laps. We have to address it. We cannot continue on as business as usual. Shout out to the businesses who say that they are participating and, you know, making a change and bringing forth racial justice and particularly justice for black people, protections, reparations, things like that, that protect black people. Shout out to everybody who has went to my website, timonics.shop and purchased your Timonics belly band holster. They are in stock. And uh, with, with each purchase, um, those who have, who have ordered have received a free gift. Um, that's just me doing my part and, you know, ensuring that, you know, those, those in the community, my subscribers, my brothers and sisters, that they have an even playing field to pr protect themselves, to be confident in their constitutional rights. So thank you everybody who has done that. Um, DJ King says uh, that Tariq just treated, just tweeted former cop who committed damn near 100 rapes and murders while on duty as a police officer is getting a plea deal. I have to, to look into that, but just want to say thank you so much. Um, I know I put out a lot and um, to the family of Rayshard Brooks, to George Floyd, let's not forget them, okay? Let's not forget them when the next holiday come up. Shout out to Father's Day. Like this sucks that there are some children who will have to go through Father's Day without their fathers. That fucking sucks. You know, it's terrible. Um. That's really all I got to say. I just want to say thank you to everybody who's been here listening to me. It's been a, a good hour. He said, what's the name of the site? Let me type this in. Neely Fuller Jr. in his book. Um, his website is producejustice.com. I'm sorry, I can't uh, walk and chew bubblegum at the same time. My website for your personal defense gear can be found at www.timonics.shop. And uh, shout out to everybody, an update I did. Uh, I was able to uh, claim my .com. I don't know if you remember, but someone had took my .com when I uh, was handling everything with my, my trademark. So I was able to claim my .com. So eventually I changed over to timonics.com. But for right now, it's just timonics.shop. And I want to say thank you to everybody who has went there and got your uh, personal defense gear. Um, shout out to everybody who has also given me a listening ear. Um, I had a family emergency over the past two weeks. So that took me away from creating content as well. So I just want to say that we have a great, great, great community, a great family. You know, we're all here for each other. Let's, let's use this opportunity to get closer, stay closer. Let's call and check on each other you know, things like that. We have to ensure that we produce justice. Okay. And there's a code, Neely Fuller Jr. He has developed a code for us and I've been following. I wish I knew about it sooner, 
but shout out to everybody who has been following the code for a while and really sticking to it. And now I see why some people didn't associate with me when I was still in my immature ways and that now, you know, I am attracting those, those like-minded people. So I want to say thank you so much. So make sure you, you get on code. Shout out to the new black media that has really helped me reclaim my African mind. Like I said, I just wish I knew about it sooner, but better late than never get on code. Okay. Thank you to uh to our brother who, who sent me a super chat. B1 Taisha, I just found your channel, delegitimize, defund, dismantle the American police institution. That's it. You know, um, shout out to our our ancestors who are here in slavery. They they knew that the system of slavery was wrong. What they did was they burnt plantations down. Now, I don't want to get on here and say that that I'm for the destruction of property and you know illegally taking lives, but I'm just saying. Some, some, you know, had to destroy. They, they did their best to destroy that system of of chattel slavery. That was a branch of racism, white supremacy. Burnt that joker to the ground. That's what you have to do. So, um, I really, really want to see laws passed for us that protect us. Who also brings justice that produces justice. That's all we can do. We can. We need to produce justice, and that's the cleanest way to put it. The cleanest way to put it. Okay, so thank you so much for that. Um, uh, what's it, brother? Atmori, uh, Michael Brown, Ferguson, Control, Cash God, how you doing? A lot of us wish we had it sooner, included myself, but we have it now. Um, right here, I have my word guide. And like I said, my other book, I carry that, that everywhere I go. Every time I get a moment, I'm using the bathroom, I have my book in there. And when I, I'm on the road, as you guys know, I'm on the road a lot. I'm listening to the uploads of um, of cows and of uh, victors of racism, white supremacy on, on YouTube. You just type in Neely Fuller on, your, on YouTube. You have hours among hours, which comes out like days, months, maybe even a year of his voice helping you to get on cold. Just, just listen to it. Cut off the TV, cut off the music, listen to it, okay? That is all I have. Um, my, my heart goes out to, you know, the families who are affected by racism, white supremacy, to those of us who are fighting racism, white supremacy, like, like like I said, I don't beat up our brother because, you know, he has lost that respect for law enforcement. And it's absolutely right. You know, it should not be on TV where we turn them into superheroes. We should not buy our children, you know, the cop badge and stuff like that at the store. That's not an honorable like costume to wear for right now. We have to do a, a, a overhaul. We have to change it and we have to as they used to say in, in our community, weed and seed. But I didn't think that was a good thing, thing to say. But, you know, like like you said, dismantle, defund, just shit, burn it, down to, burn it down to the ground, you know. And I'm not saying literally do that, but for sake, you know, when you have a field and you want to do something with that land, you burn everything on it so that you can start bringing up, you know, crops, things that are good burn the shit down to the ground. And there are certain parts of us got to burn that shit down to the ground. You may be covering up and sticking up for those people who are furthering the movement of racism, and white supremacy. You have to purge yourself of that. Okay. Shout out to Dr. Sin Q. Thank you for the super chat. I really, really appreciate that. Actually, uh, when, when I get done from here, I'm going to make you into a mod. So thank you so much for that. I really appreciate you and check out my channel as well. I will actually go to your channel and I will post you in the description of this video and I will be in your comments. Okay. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Okay. Also, yeah, get involved with city council. I'm not going to be the one to sit here and say, go out and do what you want to do in November. I'm sitting it out. I have the right to. Speaking of uh, voting, I have a vlog coming up. I was just able to head over to Selma, Alabama, where I visited the, uh, I did not go into the National Voting Rights Museum, but across the street, they have this field that is dedicated to the march in Selma. I got some video, some stories from over there. Now that I got this off my chest, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, I can get back to uploading some things that I have. So uh, stay tuned for that vlog to Selma. Yeah, don't vote. I'm not. Tangibles. Give me some tangibles. Um, a black agenda. We need a black agenda. I am tired. I am beyond tired of seeing us murdered on TV in high def. I'm done with it. Done with it. Okay. 
And one thing that one thing that is really good, we think that with the things we see in the media and also being a part during this whole COVID thing, it made us desensitized. It actually brought many of us closer together. It strengthened our, our bonds. And we actually feel what our brothers and sisters are going through. So for that part, I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. We are, are, are getting closer and we are uniting with the right people, okay, that are like-minded, who actually give a care, you know, give a shit for each other. I love it. I absolutely love it, you know, because it, it, it hurts. It fucking hurts with, with each one I see, each one I see. And as a citizen, you know, had I see this in person, you know, you really question yourself, how would I have intervened? What would I do? And Neely Fuller Jr., he he has a great uh, uh, response to that within the last cu couple of episodes of um, of his broadcast. So make sure you check that out. Um, thank you for the info about your ancestor, Mark Essex. Didn't know he was out here in the Bay going to research him. Absolutely, definitely, definitely look him up. Um, that's about it from the Black Authority yesterday. I have to ca catch up on the Black Authority uh, on part one. So make sure you, you check out the new new Black media. Um, Nicole's View. Go and check out Nicole's View. Oh, my gosh. she! I listen to her as I'm walking through the house. I can't comment a lot on there because, like I said, I'm through the house and, like, my playlist plays. Nicole's View, Black Opinion, Art Kathy, uh, the Black Authority, Professor Black Truth. Professor, Professor Black Truth, Tariq Nasheed, uh, Melvin and Danae with Intelligent Black Love. Um, it's a lot of us out here. Brother uh, Jason Reed, who does his, his thing on Twitter. Miss um, Caramel Love, I think that's her name. I'm sorry if, if I messed it up. She's also on Twitter holding it down. Just we have, we have great people. And thank you for keeping me encouraged to really, you know, do my part in producing justice. Okay, we don't have it but we have to produce justice to ensure that no one is being mistreated at any time, anywhere. And also the person that needs help the most receives the most constructive help, okay? Neely Fuller Jr., make sure you, you, you check out the elder. We have so many, so many. And I just wanna say thank you to everybody who was here, Air from VA. Yes, uh, make sure you go check out, check it out. I will put um, the Black Authorities video. I'll be catching up on that as soon as I cut this off because I got, through it. And uh, one thing too with the notifications, if you subscribe and like, make sure you, um, I need to, to do better with, with having a schedule because YouTube will not give you notifications. Anything pertaining to the new black media. Also shout out to uh, brother attorney awesome on, uh, he's on YouTube and Instagram. Brother attorney awesome, Vern Jackson. He's down in Florida. Make sure you, you check him out, okay? We need to go ahead and uh, just stay on cold, get on cold, okay? I love y'all so much. I will see y'all the next video. Uh, I'm thinking of teaming up with uh, someone I served with in the in the Navy to, to talk about uh, hostile work environments and stuff like that. She is a brilliant sister. I love her so much. So I'm still working on that. The uploads I have is uh, the upload for Selma. And I also have some other stuff I need to put together that's really interesting. Thank you so much for being here with me. Help me get off my chest and heal through y'all and join me on my other social media platforms. Thank you to everyone who has placed the order at timonics.shop and, you know, produce justice, rest in power to our fallen soldiers. Although you may have that target on your back, it does not feel good, but keep on fighting, okay? I'm, I'm proof here t telling you the target gonna be there. Fighting racism, white supremacy in your little small you know, portion of the earth is going to suck. It's going to suck like hell. But that 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 W, it may not, not, not be a super win that you're looking for, but whatever little W you get, it feels so fucking good. So keep on fighting, okay? I love y'all so much, and I'll see y'all in the next video.